right, hello everybody. Um, last little quiz, well, not quiz, the last little clip that we did, we talked about um, cortisol and melatonin. Um, I'm just going to say a little bit more about cortisol and what can affect the cortisol levels in your body and so ultimately um, affects your, your sleep. So if we think about things about blue light, we've probably all heard about blue light. Blue light's the stuff that um, sort of emits from your phone, from your laptop, from TV, from your iPad, from any sort of gadget and gizmos, things that you might have. And a lot of people say, well, blue light's not good for you, but this is the reason why, basically, okay? So the blue light kind of uh, um, tricks your brain into thinking it's still daytime. So that in itself um, prolongs the production of the cortisol that we talked about last time, and the cortisol is the, the stress hormone, but it's also the thing that keeps you awake, okay? So the blue light is making the cortisol um, come out of your system, more I suppose, and it's flattening the melatonin, which is the natural hormone that we need to sleep that we also talked about last time. Okay, so the blue light, um, it's emitted from these screens and it delays the onset of this melatonin stuff. So um, it increases your uh, alertness and everything. And obviously on a night time, you don't want to uh, increase your alertness you want to, your alertness to kind of go away so you can go to sleep, don't you? So um, I think more so for children and for young people, there's um, a lot of kids and young people want to use their phones and their iPads and things, especially on a night time. And a lot of um, teenagers especially, it's um, for fear of missing out, which is basically FOMO, if you ever go on these um, Facebook pages, that's what they talk about, FOMO, fear of missing out. So that's kind of another reason why a lot of teenagers may not sleep very well on night time. But it's not the only reason, because if we remember back, back to our, our quiz thing, but we'll talk about that later. So um, blue light is um, can be a very big problem. So if you're struggling to go to sleep, top tip is do not have your phone or your iPad or things next to your bed, okay? Put them away from your bed um, or put, them on a, put a filter on your phones. You can put filters and things on phones and iPads to stop the blue light and I know Stu that, um, that's actually filming this has just taught me that his um, filter kicks in at 10 o'clock every night so it automatically kicks in obviously he's had to use your settings and stuff like that but um, so you can get things to eliminate the blue light on your on your gadgets and stuff so the blue light it comes from a thing um, it sort of activates the thing in your brain called the pineal gland and that is the thing that releases melatonin and stuff on a night time. So the blue light sort of um, dampens down, I suppose, the pineal gland and so the melatonin and your um, hormones. Okay. So another thing that causes the cortisol, which is the stress releasing stuff, can be um, actual stress that's happening during your day. So if you're thinking like, you know, you're worried about lock going out in lockdown or you're worried about going out that lockdown's lifted and you don't want to wear a mask and all, all of that sort of stuff. That raises your cortisol levels again, which impacts on your sleep. So the thing is to think about um, how do we get rid of that cortisol? How do we de-stress before we go to bed? So it's looking at things like, um, obviously, yeah, putting your phone away and stuff. So doing things that are more relaxing, so maybe it's watching the TV but switching it off at a reasonable time and just forgetting about the TV and trying to go to sleep another way. Reading a book is always really useful. Um, Colouring in, drawing, paint, arty things, um, doing little crafts and things that can really help. Um, they can help to relax you. Yeah. Um, a warm bath before night time, um, so you can put things like lavender oil in, stuff like that. Um, you can do relaxation techniques. Um, I know some people do mindfulness, which is fab thing to do before, especially, well, any time of the day, but especially for nighttime. Um, so you can do deep breathing exercises, mindfulness, all of that sort of stuff. Um, you can count cheap. That works, definitely works. Um, so lots of different things. If you really are anxiety, have got anxieties and things so the trick is to try and get rid of those anxieties before you actually go to bed so maybe could you use a journal you know start a diary or something write everything down that's maybe it's made you a bit anxious during that day so it kind of gets out of your system so you don't take that anxiety 
to bed with you to worry about. As kids, I suppose we use a lot of things like worry dolls and worry bags and stuff like that. Dream catchers, you know, those things. But if you made a dream catcher, you kind of put all your worries into your dream catcher kind of thing as well. Um, you can um, record yourself. You can record yourself on phones and stuff. It doesn't matter where you record yourself into or just speak to somebody, which is even better. But it's all about getting those worries out of you before you go to bed because the more you're worried the more your cortisol levels go up and then that becomes a bit of a vicious circle okay which means sleep is even harder to get so i'll leave that, that that one there and then we'll talk about um i think we'll start talking about sleepy foods and the different chemicals around your body that can kind of lead to things called sleepy foods so, okay as you all switch that off from gps and practitioners to help them go to sleep you can um, sort of recreate melatonin and this other chemical called serotonin in the things that you eat. So the body produces chemical messengers. These are called serotonin. So that's a mood stabilizer, stabilizer and melatonin, which is the natural hormones that help you sleep. Okay? So some foods contain this um, sort of ingredient, I suppose, or hormone naturally called tryptophan. Okay. Tryptophan then sort of bolsters and boosts the serotonin and the melatonin levels um, in your body. So if you're looking for things, a sleepy foods diet, you need to look at things with this thing called tryptophan in it. Um, that tryptophan stuff can be found in lots and lots of sleepy foods. Um, and I think we'll next time we'll have a quiz and I'll ask you. Um, I'll give you some sort of examples of food that may or may not have this tryptophan in it, and then we'll have a bit of a sleepy quiz. Okay. Well then, though, bye bye and sleep tight. <laughs>